Hello and welcome back to the course on Power BI. In uh, this tutorial, we are going to explore our visualizations. All right, so let's get straight to it. We're going to look at three things. First of all, we're going to look at um, who are the most stable countries lending money to. Then we're going to look at who are the most riskiest com countries borrowing from. And then we're going to take one country and just analyze that one country. All right, so let's get started. Um, we're going to look at the most uh, stable countries, so the gray ones. And so let's pick them out here. Hold down control and select these countries. So Japan, Germany, Britain, and the United States. So they where they act as creditors. As you can see, the whole visualization has adjust, adjusted. All right, so what can we tell from here? Well, right away, because of the sizes of these uh, parts of the pies, we can tell that uh, the most lending is actually been done by Japan, Germany, and Britain. And we can also, also tell that from the um, tree map here. We can say see that the US didn't do much lending at all. And the interesting thing is that these countries tend to lend money to each other, right? So you can t uh, tell by the size of this, uh, of the start of the pathway, pathway. So here, for instance, Germany lent Britain $321 billion. Uh, Japan lent Germany $88.5 billion but the most of the money that they are lending is going to the US. So uh, Japan lent United States 796 billion, Germany lent them 324 billion, and Britain lent them $345 billion. So that's uh, how much money went into the US, and then there's some uh, colors going into the other uh, smaller countries. By the way, you can see that the colors, um, well, we'll see further down that the colors don't really hold uh, consistent and uh, they kind of mess up a little bit as the filtering happens and you know that's probably something that will be fixed up in Power BI uh, in the core diagram further down the track. But now let's move on to uh, this part of the chart. So we've highlighted the, uh, the four countries here and on the right we can see uh, who are the countries that are actually borrowing money. So here we're looking at um, how much they're lending and here we're going to be looking at how much countries are borrowing from these four countries. So the highest borrower by far is the United States in total $1.4 uh, trillion. Then we've got Britain and Germany, as we could see, they're lending money to each other. Um, and then we've got these uh, smaller uh, or um, European countries, they're, they're borrowing smaller amounts. And here we can see uh, the same picture as we could see here, but in a chord diagram. So we can see that the United States is by far the highest borrower and we can actually see additional information. So here we can't see where, for instance, the funds for the United States came from. We'd have to click and then, you know, restudy study a new setup of our dashboard. Whereas here we can see that most of the money for the United States is coming from Japan, 796,000. Then uh, Germany, uh, by the way, the arrow here, because of the way we set up this diagram, the arrow here means that United States owes Japan 796. Here, the arrow meant Japan lent United States 796,000 billion dollars. Uh, here, United States owes Japan 796. Here, we've got United States owes Germany 324 billion. United States owes Britain 345. So you can see where, uh, well, kind of the way to read it is still uh, you you got to start at the thick. Uh, part of the pathway and just look where it goes. So this one goes into Germany, this one goes into Britain, this one goes to Japan. But then just think of it as this is how much the United States owes uh, money, right? Uh, so then you've got the other countries and kind of like similar to what you see here, but in reverse, right? So here uh, the small uh, United States is small, here United States is huge. Here um, Japan is huge, uh, whereas here Japan is tiny, right? Because here we're focusing on how much money has been lent. Here we're focusing on how much money has been borrowed. All right, now let's proceed to, let's just click anywhere to reset that. And now let's proceed to the most riskiest countries. So Italy, Portugal, Ireland, and Greece. And let's see where they're borrowing money from. All right, so where is the money coming from? Um, so this is debtors, so this is uh, this is these countries that we've selected. And you can see that um, Italy owes the most money. And that is the same uh, thing we can see from 
um, our tree map here, but here it is more evident because we still got the other countries here that we that are not highlighted, and therefore we're comparing alongside them. Whereas here, they're, the countries we've selected are have been isolated, and we can just compare among them. So here we can see Italy owes the most, $443 billion, and most of that money is owed to France by Italy. And then also a bit is owed to Britain. Um, then what is this? Oh, and then Italy also owes Japan $38 billion. And Italy owes Spain, or owed back in the time, Spain $9.7 billion, and Italy owes United States $3.16 billion. Then comes Portugal, then Ireland, then Greece. All right, and now where are they borrowing this money from? Surprisingly, this is very interesting, all of these countries these four countries, the most riskiest, the biggest creditor for them is France. It's not Japan or the US or one of these stable countries. The biggest creditor is France. So France has lent these countries, um, and you can see here, most of that money has probably gone to Italy. Italy owes to France $366 billion. So very interesting. So this is one of those insights that you can just find from data like surprising surprisingly and uh, so you'd think that um, why would a country that is itself not uh, Italy France is according to this data set is low risk but it's not stable uh, like Germany Japan Britain and United States so why would France loan such a huge amount of money to Italy which uh, at the time was considered a very high risk country Right, so you can see that these countries seems like these countries are playing it smart, lending money to each other and to the United States, whereas France made a big loan to Italy. And so there you can see that same picture. France made a huge loan to Italy. And then France also made a quite a substantial loan to Greece, which uh, we as we know was one of the uh, least um, uh, stable countries or the most riskiest countries at the time. Okay, so again, you can derive some additional insights from here. And finally, we're going to just pick a country. So let's say we could pick France, for instance. But we already talked about France. Let's pick Germany, right? Because a lot of, uh, at the time, I remember a lot of uh, people were saying that Germany is the uh, driving force for Europe, like they're doing most of the work. So let's see what's going on here. It's a bit harder to analyze these core diagrams when, you have, when you've picked one country, right? Um, a bit harder. Or you could actually just pick Germany on the core diagram like that so instead of it adapting you can just highlight it like that and um, let's do that so you can see here germany um, germany lent money so this is creditors so germany lent money to britain 321 billion germany borrowed money from france interestingly enough so and france is a not is a low risk country but still, why did uh, why was that necessary? <laughs> interesting, very interesting. I'm sure there were reasons, but it's just interesting to see. Um, Germany lent Ireland some money. Germany lent Spain some money, and Germany lent the United States a big chunk of money, 324. So even more than they lent uh, Britain. So about the same amount, but yeah. So Germany lent the United States 324 billion dollars, and then. Um, you can see that this diagram has adjusted as well, and this is very interesting. So um, here, so if I unclick here, you'll see Germany. If you look here, it's 253 billion as a debtor. So how much Germany owes money to other countries? But if I click here, you'll see that this has changed. This is 800, 8, um, 803, right? So it's actually the same amount as here. So here we're now looking at those other countries that owe Germany. So the core diagrams are smart when they adapt, when they adjust. But at the same time, it's it can be a bit confusing if you don't follow what they're doing. So here we're saying Germany lent money to countries, right? When I click, this diagram is now representing uh, the countries, the debtors that actually owe money to Germany, right? So here, as you can see, these uh, cores are becoming smaller as they as they go away. And it's hard really to tell the countries on the end. Whereas here, now that's where they start, right? So that's that's the chords. So the United States owes uh, Germany 324 billion, same amount as we can see here. Spain owes Germany 
0.6. So it just um, puts into perspective uh, the relative sizes of the countries that owe money. So you can see that the most money is owned, owed by United States and Britain to Germany, and then Greece, Ireland, Portugal, and Spain. So Spain's second largest or third largest after these three. Um, and you actually see the amounts here, uh, approximate amounts. 324, this is 323. Um, yeah, so that's how chord diagrams work and that's how you can use them in analytics. Um, and as you can see, we created a very powerful visualization in the end. Uh, we can derive some valuable insights and uh, explore individual sep countries separately or we can explore combinations of countries just by holding down control and uh, clicking through. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and not only did we see how to um, install a custom visual but also we saw how to create a quite a powerful dashboard combining um, lots of different elements such as the custom visual then tree maps and also leveraging colors and also we got to explore this visualization. So hopefully uh, you had some fun and picked up some new skills. And always remember that you've got that arsenal of custom visuals that Power BI supplies. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy analyzing.